and welcome to another episode of Amiga Retro. Today I'm going to make a quick video of the perils of buying stuff on eBay. Now, I'm not saying eBay is not a place to buy stuff. Obviously, it is an awesome place to buy stuff, but you have to be careful of what you purchase. And there have been several videos on um, YouTube and whatnot showing uh, chips that are not necessarily, not necessarily authentic, like this one. So there's a few things that are common through all of them, and I will show you what they are. First of all, this is the real 68010 running at eight megahertz maximum suggested frequency. And as you can see, it has, I'm not sure if that's a part number or some kind of run code, whatever the one C97R, but the date code is here, which is 9203, which should be the third week of 1992. As you can see, Nice Motorola symbol, nice clean cut, very bright white lettering. Now it might vary from chip to chip, but they're very sharp, very clear. This one, the font is completely different. It's a bit larger, but it's got a brownish tinge to it. And you can see here, part of the M is missing in Motorola and it does not look like the same logo as here. Also, okay, and there are 10 megahertz variants, so the 68010, MC, 68010, P10, that's, that's, that's fine. Notice it has the same run number of whatever the 1C97R is, is up here, but the date code is suspect, 1901. So it's either the first week of 1919, which would be pretty amazing because it was well before technology like this even existed, maybe like a decade and a half after the Model T was invented, or 2019, which these processors were far, like long, long, long out of production, especially in this form factor, the 68 pin dip socket. So, uh, should, I say dual, should I say dual inline package? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these into the Amiga 500, run sysinfo and see what is reported. And I shall be right back. As you can see, we are at my Amiga 500 Plus with, as I will zoom into it, the authentic Motorola 68010. So if you're wondering why uh, the 68010, uh, where normally it's gonna be the 68000 that's in, sitting here inside this socket, if you have WHD load and you want a very stock system, so no acceleration to speak of really, and pretty much all stock, the 68010 with WHD load will give you the full functionality of the quick keys. Even though the latest versions of WHD load have improved on that with the regular 68, uh, 68000 processors, um, it's pretty much guaranteed 100% that all the quick key functionality will work with the 68010. And it actually gives you a very small speed increase at very small three percent maybe five if the wind is blowing in the right direction and it's also an optimized processor so basically um the, the other difference between the 68000 is the kind of it has less loop cycles i guess or maybe wait states i'm not exactly sure so i want to clarify that in the comments you're welcome but it basically speeds up operation slightly and it also gives you uh, um, some other functionality so now that that's in here we're going to run this info. As you can see, we're running Sysinfo version 4.4, .4, and we are indeed running a 68010 processor at 7.09 megahertz, bringing us to roughly 1.03, the performance of an Amiga 500 or 600, which basically means 3%. Though technically maybe you might get 10, but once again, as I said, if the wind is blowing in the right direction, but it's a general speed improvement and it, uh, it is noticeable from time to time. So without question, this is a genuine Motorola product. Okay, so now we're going to take out the real 68010 and replace it with the not real 68010. And you'll see what I mean by this, because we already know the uh, silk screening is extremely suspect. 
And I did order five of these, but as you'll see in a moment, hopefully it wasn't a complete waste of dollars. So I shall remove this and install that thing over there. And I will be right back. And just like magic, it has been installed. So I will turn on the power and we shall see what Sysinfo has to report. One moment. So once again, Sysinfo is up and running. We'll do a quick speed test. Um, obviously the CPU is functioning or else you wouldn't have got this far. The computer booted and programs are executing. So we know the CPU is real as far as CPUs go. And we'll wait for this to complete. This is computing the megahertz and behold, it's a 68,000 at 7.09 and we're dead even with the 500 slash 600. So as you can see, though it's labeled a 68010, it is a 68,000. So the extra money I paid was definitely in vain. So beware. Okay, so that was that. So one thing I do not understand is why would someone go through the hassle of sanding down, painting, and laser etching a regular 68,000 to 68,010 because they're not much difference in price on eBay. I, it's not like doing fake 060s or 040s or whatever. I, I don't know. That makes no sense to me. But I guess if there's a will, there's a way. But uh, not that it's necessary because we know this is fake. And yes, all the other five I bought are actual 68,000s. Now, I guess the good thing is they all work. And there's 68,000 processors, but of course I have quite a few of those now because of these. But at least they work, so I guess I can't complain. But once again, um, you know, the seller obviously knows, or at least didn't know. It depends. If it was a direct seller, they know because they did this. If it's someone that bought a lot of them from China, is where these came from, and then sold them as is, not checking them, I don't know. But you know what? They still work. It's not a complete waste of money, but definitely false advertising. But for completeness, let's see if I can remove some of this paint off of here, because we know they're fake. So I'm gonna try regular alcohol first. And I don't have acetone if this doesn't work, but I could always try a brake cleaner, I guess. I, I don't know, I've never tried that. So let's uh, rub this here. Oh. And if it comes off like that with alcohol, that's not a good sign. Because, uh, let's try a larger swath here. Oh my. Yeah, for sure. So let's, uh, let's step it up a notch. Let's go to brake cleaner, see if it takes off more or not. Because where would we, where would we be, oops, sorry for that. Where would we be without brake cleaner? So getting it all over the place. Okay, let's try this area over here. Oh yes. Brake cleaner is definitely more destructive. So I could probably try to go right down to the bare plastic, but I won't. But yes, as you can see, oh, there is actually, uh, is there anything under there? No. I could try over the other area, but since I'm going to use these, I don't want to wreck the silk screen, but we know for sure. Uh, yeah. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this out. Goodbye. Put in the original, the 100% certified Motorola processor and brake cleaner as well. And we will, I, one second, I think I, that's better. And we will pick an area here as well. So here we go. Rub, 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 rub. For about the same amount of time as the other one. Nothing. Because this is a genuine bona fide Motorola product. Excellent. That's it. So be wary. Uh, check, like I said, check the check the font. Check the, you know, the, the, the typeface. So, so basically they're usually white or they should be easy to read, you know, unlike, uh, uh, unlike these ones here, which obviously is a kind of a, and it seems to be actually a, a common thing with the, uh, the re, like the sanded repainted and then re-laser etched. 
And they're this brownish color versus the white. But anyways, enough of that. So beware, buyer beware. And as always, thanks for watching.